In this episode, a 54-year-old grandmother goes to labor in the rubber plantations and is never heard from again. Locals and security personnel find something shocking two days later. An intensely engorged reticulated python is having trouble moving in the dense vegetation. Its protruding belly is an obvious indicator. Jara spent years working in the rubber fields. She worked through the sweltering midday heat for long, arduous hours. Her occupation was the hunter. The rubber tree needed diagonal cuts made with a scalpel to do this. The milky white liquid would drip from her cuts, which she would gather in tiny plastic cups or coconut shells. Big was the farm. As far as the eye could see, rubber plants were arranged in endless rows. Indonesia has lost 18% of its tree canopy since the year 2000. In the southeast of the island, in the Jambi province where Jira labored, rice, corn, tobacco, palm oil, and rubber were created on a massive scale. Deforestation makes space for agriculture. In Jambi, the plantations are surrounded by stunning scenery. The volcanic peaks and mountains of the Bone Range can be seen from the evergreen woods. Tidal waterways flow through the lush green valleys, which are also dotted with mangrove swamps. Numerous native wildlife species reside in this habitat and compete for resources with an ever-growing human populace. She left her small residence before dawn, which was still dark outside. Dra made the equal of 1 pound and 25 pence a day, depending on the moon, to give her the meager amount of light she needed to navigate through the dense jungle and toward the plantation. Jura made just 45 pounds, $55, monthly, working seven days a week in a second job. The plantation offered no employment security despite spending more than 10 years there. Like many other workers, Jura was only hired daily without a formal contract or associated benefits. Jura got started after checking in that morning at the farm. She cut diagonally while keeping her knife pressed tightly against each branch. She was concentrating on her work. Before tying her collection beaker underneath it, and going on to the following tree, she waited until the milky white rubber started flowing. She didn't hear a silent predator creeping up behind her, but immediately experienced excruciating back pain. She jumped forward as suddenly, stabbing pain caused her to do so. In the commotion, she dropped her knife and felt something closely encircled her to her absolute terror. A 22-foot-long snake had coiled its thick, muscular coil around Jara's body, squeezing it ever tighter. As she was dragged to the ground, Sarah gasped. She inhaled deeply. She was unable to move as the pressure increased around her torso. Her side restrained her limbs from moving. She was unprepared for the enormous serpent. It had surprised her as dawn was breaking. She had no hope of retaliating. The snake's strangling hold intensified as she writhed in an attempt to escape. She made a valiant effort to escape. She attempted to kick the snake, but her sandals fell off. She let go of her head wrap, which dropped to the ground soundlessly. Jura experienced a near-breathing attack. She could not release it because the serpent squeezed so hard. Jura passed away in painful minutes. A catastrophe transpired. Nobody witnessed her anguish as she passed away alone. Her family was unlikely to feel any compensation for their tragic loss because she had labored every day of her adult life to supporting them. When Jura's body was still and her heart had ceased beating, she was no longer in pain. The serpent let go of its hold. It emerged from Jera and moved toward her cranium while maintaining an unblinking gaze. It opened its lips wide, more comprehensive than its head and broader than Jar's head, stretching the elastic ligaments that hold its lower jaw to its skull. Then, as its maw grew closer to her body, it began consuming her. The youthful grandmother was engulfed by it as it dragged her down, moving over her head, shoulders, and feet before swallowing her whole. The snake grew severely engorged throughout the day as it could fit Jar's complete body inside its stomach. The giant snakes in the are reticulated pythons. They usually measure between 1.5 and 6 meters or about 5 and 25 feet, but there have been reports of them reaching more extraordinary lengths, like the one that killed Sarah. They have a maximum weight of 165 pounds or 75 kilos. When Yara didn't come home at the end of the day, her spouse became concerned. He set out in quest of he traveled to the rubber plantation along her usual route through the brush. That day, she had yet to leave her job early. While walking through the extensive tree rows on the plantation, her spouse called her name as he scouted the area. Then he discovered Jar's jacket on the ground next to her shoes and a knife. As he glanced around, he picked them up. He screamed. But the eerie stillness persisted. He was aware that she had to have suffered a dreadful fate. He fled to the village, where he yelled for assistance finding a group that had trailed him to the rubber plantation. 
They proceeded to search for Jura as night fell. Only at 2 o'clock am did Jar arrive. Husband grudgingly gave up, went out looking for the evening, and returned. He called the local authorities and reported his wife missing. A day later, they began the search along with security personnel. He led them to where he discovered jars and other items lying on the ground. The hunt went on. According to reports, it took two days before a local made the startling finding that a vast seven-meter-long snake was lying in the grass. It had little mobility. Its torso had unsightly bulges. They carried it into a clearing where one of the locals cut off its head, killing it there. A crowd assembled in the area. Police Chief Hark gave the command, and someone pulled out another knife and cut the snake down the length from head to tail. She was unharmed as the snake's body leaked out of the jar and onto the pavement. For those watching, it was a frightening shock that would follow her family around for the rest of their lives. It was the stuff of nightmares to learn that a giant snake had consumed a loved one. Jara's home village released a statement claiming that some residents had lately seen an even more enormous python nearby. They attempted to capture it and calculated that it was at least 27 feet long, but it was able to escape. It disappeared into the nearby woodland in a slither. Although attacks like this are becoming more frequent, it is understandable that the locals would be worried about such enormous snakes surrounding their homes. Despite being uncommon, they occasionally happen in the grand plan of things. They occur more frequently than they did previously. Even though reticulated pythons can reach enormous lengths, the regular prey is typically much smaller. They hunt pigs, deer, or rodents near bird nests, but they need somewhere to go because their environment is rapidly disappearing. They compete directly with people for some of their food supplies as well. Additionally, because of the increasing fragmentation of their habitat, they occasionally have to travel through populated areas to get from one forested region to another. These snakes can also find tasty food in human communities. Rats and domesticated animals are constantly near people. Although snakes don't typically target people, their opportunistic nature makes them a dangerous predator that we should fear. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content.